Hi, this is Ron Martinson of ronmartblog.com, and I'm going to talk to you today about Portraiture 3 AI and skin retouching. Now, I've got two images, one that's pretty common, um, kind of easy to uh, evaluate, and one that's a little more complex, and so we'll start with the easy one first. I went ahead and got this loaded and zoomed where I wanted it, and um, one of the cool features about this product is that it's uh, got really precise masking to kind of keep you from spending a lot of time figuring out what should be soft and what shouldn't. And that eliminates a lot of just manual tedious labor. And so um, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the top and then we're going to kind of dive in and to me what really is the magic of this product. So the presets uh, up here basically control the smoothing levels up here. And generally I've stick with um, smoothing normal and smoothing medium those generally meet my needs but you know what choices kind of you know subjective is up to you sometimes the size of the image will matter as well um, speaking of that you know this portrait size is basically looking at the size of your file and how much data is there and determining how much uh, information to put in um, its smoothing algorithm and so you know larger images um, will take require more than something small, so that's what it's doing. So I always leave that set to auto. And you know, people ask me, well, what's the difference between fine, medium, and large? Like, what do these things do? Honestly, for any product that has sliders, my advice is always just slide them and see. So if I come up here and crank this up all the way, you'll see that all her pores basically got filled in. And when I turn that off, the pores start coming back you know you start seeing more fine level details you can get these really convenient um, preset buttons here to always put things back and then go do the same thing with medium and the same thing with large and so like watch what happens in this area here with large and then you turn it off so you basically get an idea of what each uh, thing does really quickly that being said, again, I just typically use the presets, and if I want more or less, I'll generally use the opacity um, to get me the amount that I want. So with that, um, one of the common things is, well, I only want skin softening where I want it. Well, that's what the mask feature is for. If I turn this off, it's going to apply to the entire image an even amount, but that's not very useful. We really just want it to apply just to the skin, not to the hair and the background and so forth. So We'll turn the skin masking on and then we'll go over here and there's a couple tools at our disposal um, for me the most helpful thing is to turn the mask on to see exactly what it's doing so um, you know right now the auto mask is off and so it's applying it pretty aggressively if I turn auto mask on it did a reasonable job of figuring out you know, what's the skin and so I like that as a starting point um, generally uh, you can do it that way. What I really prefer to do is I'll come over here and just use the eyedropper tool and pick a mask color. And I'll click on a piece of her skin that is uh, representative of a starting point. And that gets me a lot closer. Um, and then if I want to add more while it's in a plus dropper, I can come in here and say, hey, let's add this dark area. But then you see that will bring in quite a bit. And so maybe I don't want to do that or maybe I want to handle that you know, in a different way. And so very often, if you just want to reset it, just come back over here and pick the first dropper again, call it good. This, you know, this piece of skin here is a little darker than the other, so it'll add a little bit more. And so I'm going to just go ahead and go with that. Um, for demonstration's sake, just to kind of show you again, uh, I'll come in here and select this so you can see a lot more things that you don't want and see how some of these tools can help you. And really, the two things you have are fuzziness and latitude. And once again, watch what they do when you slide them. If I turn fuzziness all the way down, you see that it doesn't turn the mask completely off. Um, it just starts removing uh, some of the details. And so it's part of the algorithm that it has. And so you can kind of see, okay, I crank this up. I start getting some of the hair back. Uh, maybe that's not what I want. And then I can come down here in latitude, kind of do the same thing. If I start pulling this back, you start seeing the hair goes away. So you know, latitude is really good for that. But it's also reducing the overall impact. Now, 
don't get necessarily hung up on the fact that it's getting rid of some of that because usually in the image you're never going to distinguish that there's like a little teeny bit of white here and there and stuff. It's generally going to look good. So this is probably a good mask that you can go with. Um, if I scroll up a little bit, you can see, you know, she's got her scalp here um, that's getting some softening as well. But her hair you probably don't want. Um, again, this is subjective and really, you know, depending on what your artistic desires are, you can spend a lot of time uh, fooling around with this type of stuff. you got her eyebrows in here. Maybe you don't want those eyebrows as much. So you can start pulling them out. Um, but you, again, you're losing some skin, skin effect here. So um, I'm going to be a little more aggressive, uh, honestly, for my first one. First go with this. And you know, the key thing here is that when I go back to Photoshop in this case, um, I want to take advantage of Photoshop has layers. So I want to create a new layer and I want to have this mask applied so that this is basically what I see in Photoshop. Um, you know, this is what the whole image looks like and you can validate that. But what I want is um, you know, just a mask that shows me uh, in Photoshop and then I can always merge it to the same layer. So I never use the same layer feature. Uh, I always prefer to have a separate layer. And so with that, let's go over here, say OK and apply it. And let's watch what happens. So it created a new layer called background copy. If I go and select that layer, whoops, select that layer, you'll see that this is pretty much what I was looking at inside portraiture. And so if I say, OK, well, you know, um, I'm not really sure if I want to do this. There's, you can use any of your selection tools like quick mass or select subject and these things and invert them and kind of play around and stuff. Um, you know, again, how much uh, effort you put in that is going to determine the final uh, result of your image. Um, but what I'll typically do is just come in here uh, with a black mask uh, and then remove what I don't want. This is just for, again, illustrative purposes. Uh, you know, to, to say that feels like they got more in here than I want, I'll kind of come along and just start erasing. And again, you can just tweak as to your heart's content on all this stuff. Um, and then you can see the whole image again. Now, if I come zoom in, I can say, OK, this is, this is nice. It's a light level of masking. It's not too overwhelming. Um, you can see before, after. So I haven't completely lost texture, so it still feels real, but I still have uh, some skin softening applied. And people say, well, you know, what about all these, you know, other little things that didn't get rid of that? Don't crank the masking up, or the um, softening effect up so high that it covers that. Then you'll have basically a wax figure. Um, it's better just to kind of come in in a new layer, go and use the uh, healing brush, and then make sure that content aware and sample all layers is applied. And so that way you can kind of come in here and say, OK, make this only as big as it needs to be. And let's go start hitting some of these. And sometimes you have to do you know, um, a moving motion to get it to not look like a circle. It generally does better with a little more information. And Again, this is one of those things that you can spend as much time as you want making your image as more or less realistic than you want. Some people say, you know, get rid of acne, but don't get rid of moles because that's the characteristic of the model. Other people, it's like, no, I don't want any of that stuff. It's against your choice. Um, you know, for this example, just to show you what I do, I'll do like that. She's got like some little uh, sleepy seed here or something and a couple weird things happening over by her eyelashes here. And some people spend a lot of time basically redrawing these eyelashes back in. And that's really a difference between the, you know, the highest end and kind of typical photos is how much effort you spend in some of that, you know, construction, reconstruction. And that's, you know, sometimes requires, um, you know, more artistic skill uh, or fine motor skills than some people have. So um, how much you do may also be, you know, ability based. And so, I'm actually okay with this. Um, you know, some people may want more skin softening. Should have, you know, could have chosen a different um, amount. You know, when uh, applying it. Some people say, you know, hey, what about these, you know, kind of crow's feet over here? Okay, well, you know, you can erase it if you want, um, or leave it in there. Uh, it's kind of up to you. Uh, I generally don't 
spend much time removing those because again I think it, it the more you remove it the more it kind of takes away from the model's looks um, you know if I'm over here and I'm saying you know I don't really like what's happening in the eyebrows here I can get uh, a black brush and then I can just kind of bring this down a little smaller and just say, okay, let's make sure the eyes don't have too much. I want to make it feel like there's eyebrows texture here. Again, up to you. So that's the first image. Again, pretty easy, pretty quickly. We got good results. You can see the before, after. Still looks realistic. And, you know, sometimes you have to go pay a little attention to what's happening on the shoulders and everything for an image like this. But I'm satisfied with that. Now, let's go over to the second image. Now, this one, if you had to do manually, it'd be really hard. You know, there's, there's so much detail and stuff going on, and there's skin kind of poking through. So I'm going to go over here to Filter, and I'm going to do Image Domic Portraiture 3. And again, same, same deal all over again. Now, because there's less detail in the face, you could actually amp up the... Um, smoothing a little bit more and it's not going to look as waxy um, just because you don't see as much skin surface so you can be a little more aggressive if you want just for illustration purposes that's what I'm going to do for this one and I'm going to have the you know masking turned on and go see what did auto mask do for me well it did a pretty good job um, if I want a little bit more I'll go select the point that's important to me so I'll come over here and say, let's do that. And, you know, I like that. And on, honestly, 99% of the time, that's exactly what I do. Is I clicked the one image or one spot. It gives me most of what I want. If I feel like I need a little bit more, I'll go in and pick another area and say, give me more. And because it's such a radical difference, you know, in the original image between the skin and this, the masking is excellent. I mean, imagine having to do all that uh, hand painting or doing selections and stuff. So this is where this product really saves you a ton of time. It did get some stuff along the edge. And as we know, we could you know come in here for one and use latitude to get rid of some of that. And you know how much time you spend on that is kind of this balance between what do you want to keep and what do you want to lose. But for illustration purposes, I'm going to add it back there a little bit because I want to show you something. And so we're going to say, okay, that's good. That's what I want. We apply it. And then now, if we come in here, we look at what we have. That's great. It has that we're one. It even has the nose hole there that uh, you may not have noticed right away. So I'm going to go ahead and create a layer mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come in here with a uh, black brush make this kind of big and again you can use masks and stuff to make this more granular and just say you know let's go get rid of that stuff that it added that I didn't really want and again I might have fixed it normally uh, in uh, in line the way I wanted but I'm doing this just to kind of give you an idea of how my workflow works for different techniques uh, come here zoom through here and so we'll make sure that there's nothing that we really don't want softened and you can kind of see here if I look at the mask you know what all I've blacked out and just kind of left those areas and I'll turn this back on and you can see a before and after so this is it we have uh, two images you know, I spent a lot of time talking, uh, so about 13 minutes talking. Um, generally, if I were to do them, I could do them, you know, and really quick, you know, minute or two for this, uh, this work. And uh, that's what this product's really great about, is that you don't really spend time, um, you know, doing a lot of uh, fine level detail on your skin softening. That's just one quick layer, and then you move on to your other creative tasks that you want to do. Again, Ron Martinson, ronmartblog.com. Please check out my blog. I have a discount on Portraiture 3, so I'd love for you to come look at my um, discount codes uh, page and take advantage of that and give it a shot. If you could try it before you buy it to see if it works for you, and if you like it, then buy it. Thank you very much. Bye.